what's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video where I'm going to go over the defensive re rework that GGG implemented in Lake of Calandra. If a lot of you don't know, at the start of the league or before the league, GGG actually came up with this manifesto for character balance where they pretty much said what their goals were with specific changes. And one of the goals that they came up with was that they wanted to make defenses more diverse. If you see here that identified a problem in the manifesto and they said the goal was to improve diversity in defensive options. So let me go read what they said. The substantial changes to character defenses contained in the 3.16 expansion had the desired effect of encouraging players to invest more heavily in character defenses besides life stacking. We're happy with the direction but we'll be making further changes aimed at making some of the most powerful defensive layers require more investment and improving diversity in defensive options. We're making a set of changes with this goal 3.19 and they'll be refining these plans. So let's go see exactly how they've actually done because they did make a lot of defensive changes and most of them were actually nerfs. So maybe some things actually changed, maybe some things didn't, we'll see. So the number one way of trying to look up defenses is pretty much to see what auras are being ran. Now most people will look at auras and pretty much be able to judge immediately what the state of the league is in terms of how it's going. So if you ever want to see what builds, what auras builds are running, you can see here, you can go down to all skills and then masteries. You can see here what's going on and you can actually compare it to last league's data if you go to Sentinel League. Now... I actually grabbed this from POE Ninja. So right now, our league has Determination at 73%, Defiance Banner at 44%, and Grace at 43%. Now lastly, we had Determination at 77%, Defiance Banner at 67%, and Grace at 30%. So what we can see here is also Molten Shell is still used by 70% of the player base. As pretty much as broken as in survivability. If you ever haven't played a character, everyone always runs cast one damage, take a molten shell. Vol molten shell is also incredible. If you ever watch most hardcore SSF deaths, most of the time it's because their molten shell is on cooldown. And as long as your molten shell is not on cooldown, it's pretty much impossible to die as long as you don't get one shotted. So you can see here. This is how it changed. This is from Sentinel League, and now this is Calandra League. So not much has really changed, right? So the impact of the defensive reworks at first hand is that it had zero impact on the diversity of defensive options. Because of the nerf to reservation efficiency, however, I think I see a lot of builds just opting to drop Defiance Banner. So you can see here Defiance Banner actually went from 67 to 44%. And that's pretty much because of the nerf to reservation efficiency. Now we want to look at it from the past. If you look at Sentinel League right here, you can see the mastery for reservation efficiency was actually at 84% used. Now that is actually kind of high. But at Calandra League, there's no mastery that's used that much anymore. And it is all the way down to 69% for 50 life. Now I was actually really surprised they nerfed the reservation efficiency mastery. Because the Reservation Efficiency Mastery could have just been nerfed by to 10% instead of just being straight up removed. Now this actually does make it a lot harder for Defensive Variety. Because if you remove Reservation Efficiency Mastery, we have less choices with the auras we choose to use for defenses. So that's why we see, I think, more and more people only use Determination and it's even harder to use Grace. So right now you can see actually Grace is 43%. So this might be because of the popularity of lightning strike builds now a lot of times you could also go into poe ninja and pretty much just click on grace to see what build is being played so you can see here it's mostly lightning strike explosive arrow and some other builds so it's not really used an insane amount for a lot of different builds but lightning strike currently is the most popular skill in the game and lastly righteous fire was actually the most popular skill at this point and righteous fire actually doesn't use grace because they were using agus aurora before so you can see here Aegis Aurora was at 32%. And with Aegis Aurora, you don't really want Grace because you just want to block. Because if you actually evade an attack, it doesn't trigger the Aegis Aurora effect. Now, the funny thing about Aegis Aurora is Aegis Aurora is now a much less popular defensive option. And this is pretty much because the economy for Aegis Aurora has actually gone 
batshit crazy. And Aegis Aurora is at 19 to 20 divines. All of the tier 1 uniques have actually really gone up in price almost, which is kind of surprising to see. And this is actually just kind of sad because 19 divines is a lot for a casual player. And a lot of the people playing Righteous Fire are finding that they can't really afford or they don't want to grind for an item that's that expensive. And 19 divines is a lot. So because Aegis Aurora is actually nerfed, defensive variety is actually worse than before because this whole archetype of using block and spell block has pretty much been gutted because the item is too expensive and melting. Now melting was another great defensive option. So right now, you kind of have two options if you want to build your character. You can try to get 100% spell suppression or you can try to get 90 max res. Now the problem with this is that melting currently is completely nerfed. So let's go look at how much melting is. Melting used to be a 5 to 6x jewel. So can I even find Melody on here? So Melody is actually only 50 Chaos. Now the reason behind that is now Melody actually gives you negative 4% to all maximum elemental resistances. So you actually have to find a way to make up for it. And it's actually kind of annoying and you probably need an impossible escape or points on the tree. So it is actually a huge, huge nerf. Because Melody and Aegis Aurora being more rare has actually led to a decrease in defensive variety. And that's actually kind of sad to see because i feel like when you want to build a defense on a character it's super cookie cutter now all you get is molten shell you get cast when damage or not molten shell you get determination you get cast when damage taken molten shell you have a granite flask you have suppression and if you can't get the points of suppression on a tree you pretty much have to have suppression on every single piece of your gear and most builds will always try to get some suppression on the tree because without it it is super, super hard to get 100%. And that pretty much lowers your item diversity too. And in the end, nothing has changed with the defensive rework in terms of what people are using for defenses. If anything, it's gotten worse because of the nerf to Aegis Aurora. Now, you might be wondering, what about the buffs to certain auras? So if you actually remember, let's go look at the character balance, is that GGG actually buffed a bunch of underbalanced skills and under balance aura so one of them is arctic armor not enough defensive power so they buff arctic armor to be 21 percent less physical damage taken instead of 13 percent and 20 percent less fire damage taken instead of 12 percent now flesh and stone they make it so it's 15 percent less damage for attacks from enemies that aren't nearby instead of 11 percent and then defiance banner they actually nerfed it wind dancer they lowered the drawback so that it no longer provides 40% more evasion rating and now provides 10% more chance to evade attacks. So instead, and change wind dance would be less risky by with high amounts of evasion. Okay, so they're pretty much buffing it. So if you have a lot of evasion, it's a lot better. Arrow dancing it has a less extreme penalty now. So it is 20%. Skill knowledge provides 40% more chance to evade projectile attacks or 20% less chance to evade melee. And now provide evasion ratings doubled and 25% less evasion ratings. So this is a lot, lot better than before. And they also changed ward up a little bit. I'm not really sure if anyone is using ward at the moment outside of cast one damage taken builds. So maybe we can look at the faith guard unique helmet and see how many people are using this. They nerf grasping mail. They change gravitious and some and gravitious is a pretty big change. And the last one I really see is that they change mind over matter to be now 40 percent instead of 30 percent so they pretty much move some of the power from cloak of defiance back into the mind over matter node now like i said arctic armor flesh and stone wind dancer and this is actually the graphic for arrow dancing i didn't really know that and yeah so basically these are things that got changed and let's see what actually happened to them so the impact of the changes right so you might want to not look at the screen because it might be very sad. So Arctic Armor was at 0.7% last Lincoln Sentinel. Flesh and Stone, 2%. Wind Dancer, 0.1%. Arrow Dancing, 0%. Mind Over Matter, 7%. Now in Calandra League, Arctic Armor is at 3%. So kind of a change, 2.3%. That's not too bad, right? Flesh and Stone, 2%. That's zero change. Wind Dancer, 0.5%. That's 0.4% change. Well, that's better than nothing, right? Arrow dancing 0.1%. 
Well, that's a 0.1% change. Mine over matter is I actually left this out on accident. So let's go see what mine over matter is. And let's go check out faith guard while we're at it. So mine over matter is at 8%. So it did get slightly more used. And uh, what's the one well, faith guard? 0% usage rate. So not really any huge difference. So the changes pretty much had almost zero impact on improving diversity of defensive options outside of a tiny change in Arctic armor usage rate. And this is pretty much because most of these changes are not really big enough to make a difference. And a lot of the auras that they actually changed won't really make a difference because we don't have the reservation efficiency to use the auras anymore. Like no one can really fit Arctic armor, flesh and stone into their build. It's just really, really bad. Now, mine over matter is something that has not been finished the rework they said. So that's probably why it's not fully fleshed out. Now, overall, it is very, very, very sad to see how certain defensive archetypes have been completely trashed and removed. So Archmage for Mind Over Matter used to be really, really good. And it used to be a really, really fun build and a really different way of building your character's defenses. It was really, really interesting to scale your mana regen and have it be good for your damage and your also your survivability with arcane cloak and then you also had the what's that one node called it's on the left side of the tree right here agnostic that gives you a bunch of regen and the fact of the matter is the buff to minor of matter pretty much completely misses the point of why the skill is not really used anymore or the node people don't really use mine over matter because it is near impossible to get mana regen after the horrible expedition nerfs to arcane surge now for people who don't really know let's go see can you actually see the change on poe wiki so a lot of people ask me, why can't you play Mind Over Matter? And it's pretty much because Arcane Surge no longer grants 0.5% of mana regenerated per second. And this is actually a huge, huge change because instead of 30% mana regeneration rate, it's, it's now 30% increased mana regeneration rate. And this used to be a huge deal because this scaled off of how much mana you actually had. So that one nerf right there completely destroyed the archetype. And I do think that it's nice to have an archetype like that. And Mind Over Matter and Mana Builds was never going to be that strong because auras are so overpowered in the game right now. So that's pretty much another reason why Mind Over Matter builds are not really that in meta. Now, small incremental buffs to underused skills, auras, and nodes will never lead to a shift in the meta. This is something that people always bring up to GGG, but they pretty much just never really listen to what's it called to what the players have to say now you can see here they actually did try to buff a lot of underused skills and none of these skills it does anything right so you can see here where is it they said they do a balance pass like cleave let's see how many people are playing cleave on poe ninja and i bet you it is a absurdly low amount the so cleave right here zero percent what a surprise right cleave and sentinel lee zero percent so the small incremental buffs usually doesn't shake it up like what they did to determination and grace in 3.16 was it was a huge change so that's why people start using it so these tiny changes don't really accomplish anything and you need something really big to shake it up now the meta is pretty diverse in terms of skills there are a lot of skills being used at the top of poe ninja even though the builds are mostly all the same However, every single build is using the exact same defenses. You have Determination, and then you have 100% Spell Suppression. And then the other ways of building defense, which was 90% Max Res instead of 100% Spell Suppression, has pretty much been removed from the game. As you see, 39% of people are using Melding in Sentinel League, and I'm pretty sure 7% of people are using Melding in Calandra League. So defensive diversity is worse than ever because of the lack of Aegis and Melding as an affordable alternative. So maybe it'll get better by the end of the league. But in terms of GGG accomplishing their goal for 3.19 of increasing di defensive, defensive diversity, it is an absolute disaster. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Exalts, and Mage Bloods and Divine Orbs than me. And see you next time. Bye. Stay